Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel. Now in Project Zomboid, one of the most time consuming aspects of the game is leveling your character's skills. Every single one has its own requirements and best techniques that newer or even some experienced players won't know. So in this video, I'll be taking every crafting and every survival skill from Project Zomboid and explaining how to level each one in the quickest way possible. I'll leave some chapters in this video so that you can always come back and refer to the specific section of the this video that you need and as always if you find it useful be sure to drop it a like to help the channel and subscribe for more tips and guides like this one. So first and foremost I want to kick this guide off by saying that whatever skill you're going to be learning you will always have better experience gains if you read the corresponding skill book for what you are learning. These books span from beginner to master and cover every single level with the multipliers they provide increasing as your skill level also increases. So for the best results, make sure that you read a book before you get started. All right, let's jump into what I think is probably the most popular skill in Project Zomboid, Carpentry. If you're looking to get a boost with Carpentry early on, you can choose Park Ranger, Construction Worker, Repairman, or Engineer to gain one level in the Carpentry skill immediately on spawn, as well as a 75% experience boost. The Carpenter occupation will give you three levels and a 125% experience boost. When it comes to traits you can select handy for an extra level as well as giving you faster and stronger constructions for the cost of eight points. Being specific this trait gives you a bonus 100 HP to all constructions except for walls. Now for leveling carpentry we have a few options and the best way to level will depend on the tools that you have available to you. For example if you have an axe and a saw chopping down trees and sawing logs will actually level your carpentry skill. Doing this will give a small amount of of XP per log sword and can help you build up supplies for the later levels. However, if you have a hammer and a screwdriver, you can disassemble beds for carpentry XP instead. Each bed will give you a small amount of XP for a successful attempt. If you have all of the aforementioned tools with you, you can disassemble pretty much any furniture item for experience points. However, a small note here, keep in mind that doing this on multiplayer servers is heavily frowned upon, especially when it's a loot spawn container that you're disassembling. Not so much an issue if you're on single player, so if that's the mode that you're playing on, you can go nuts. Now, whichever method you choose to level your carpentry, there is an extra step that most players don't do to speed things up. Each plank you are given through your efforts here can be sharpened with a knife of any kind and turned into a crafted spear. Not only do these make for great weapons that are easily obtainable, the condition of which scales as your carpentry levels increase, but it also grants you more XP and carpentry for every spear that you make. So for the best results, cut down some trees, turn the planks into spears, and you'll be leveling through those first few levels in no time. As your level increases in the carpentry skill, the best thing you can do is honestly just to get building. You can craft wall frames then fill them with a lower tier wall and upgrade them as time goes on. Doing this around your chosen base and creating a perimeter wall will grant you a ton of carpentry experience points when combined with the multiplier from the books. Also I should mention that for anyone looking to level carpentry without using the skill itself you can alternatively try and watch every episode of Woodcraft. This show is on every day at 12 p.m. midday on the live and living channel for the first eight days of the Nox infection. Combined with XP multipliers, this can result in massive gains. With the implementation of VHS tapes to the game, you can also opt to hit the VHS store and acquire some woodcraft tapes instead. Either way, it's a great way to level. All right, so next in our list of crafting skills, we have the cooking skill. Every level in cooking means that the player can make more nutritious foods with the same ingredients as a lower tier chef. And if you can reach cooking level 7, you can actually start using rotten foods in soups and stews without consequence. One of the lesser skills in terms of priority, but a great one to add to your safe house if you have the time. So what are the best ways for us to gain experience points in cooking? Again, it's not as simple of an answer as you might expect. When you first start your run, you are likely just going to want to cook everything you come across. Getting started, one of the easiest ways to gain cooking experience can just be to cook canned soup 
all you need is a saucepan or a cooking pot and a tin of soup. It requires no more ingredients and is relatively quick to cook. If you have the luxury of more cooking items and ingredients, we want to start by adding as many ingredients as we can to dishes. Each ingredient, spice or sauce gives us additional experience points. Stews or roasts tend to be the best option here as they generally accept most items out of all of the cooking methods. Lastly, there's one small tip that can heavily increase how much experience you get whilst cooking. For any meat products you find, you can actually cook that item on its own for experience points, and then you can add it to a recipe again once it's been cooked to gain more experience points for adding more ingredients. It won't burn the item and it will increase your experience points gained drastically with fewer ingredients. If you're looking to level this skill without actually cooking, your best bet is the cook show. This show is available for the first nine days of your game on the Life and Living channel. This time you'll need to tune in at 6am to catch the show, and if you're worried your character might be asleep, just use a watch to set an alarm for 5.40am and you should have plenty of time to get the TV up and running before you miss it. You can also find VHS tapes for the cook show out in the world, mostly in VHS stores but also in homes on bookshelves. Next we're on to the farming skill. This one isn't quite as complex as the others as when it comes to gaining experience points the only action that actually gives them to you is harvesting your crops. Anything else like watering them, treating them won't give you XP. However, there is something that's worth understanding about farming to maximize the experience you receive from each crop you harvest. Essentially, the XP you receive from harvesting is determined by the health of the individual crop. The health of a crop will gradually climb after it is planted. So, if it's purely experience points that you're after, waiting until the crop is in its seed bearing phase, that's the phase that comes after the blooming phase when it's first harvestable, will give you the best results, assuming that you've kept them well watered and free of disease. Experience gain is not related to the yield you receive either, but for the best yields you'll want to fertilize your crops and ideally harvest them during the summer months, as your yield is affected by the seasons and summer will give the best return on investment. There is a single chance to gain farming experience from watching the Life and Living channel, which is on day 2 at 6pm as part of the show Exposure Survival. You'll gain 75 experience points or more if you've got an XP multiplier present. Alright, the next one on our list is First Aid. I think it's fair to say that this is probably the least popular skill in Project Zomboid, one that I think could probably use an overhaul, but if you do choose to level this skill you will be able to heal from fractures and deep wounds faster, these wounds will have less impact on your character movement and weapon attacks, and you'll also be able to complete medical actions faster amongst some other minor benefits. If for any reason you want to start with higher first aid skill, you can choose the doctor occupation for three levels in first aid, or nurse for two levels in first aid. Both the first aider and former scout trades provide an extra level in the skill as well. Now granted I actually don't have too much experience with leveling first aid, but I do know that there is a tried and trusted way of gaining XP in first aid which will prevent too much damage to your character and allow you to farm experience. For this we're going to make sure that we have plenty of disinfected bandages on standby, a suture needle and a suture needle holder and lastly a set of tweezers for good measure. You're also going to want to ensure that wherever you perform this technique you've cleared the area of zombies as the last thing you want is one of them coming waddling over whilst you're doing this. Then we're going to smash a window. Using the smashed window we're going to do what all of our mothers tried so desperately to keep us from doing as kids and we're going to step in glass with bare feet. Once we have a wound, we simply remove the glass using the tweezers as long as you stay stood in the glass shards, the wounds will continue to appear and you'll just keep removing them. Keep an eye on your health and as soon as you feel you've gained enough experience from removing the glass, you can step away, stitch up any wounds and apply a bandage. You'll want to keep tending to these wounds to make sure that they don't get infected and take it easy for a couple of days until they heal. But once they do, you'll come away with a whole bunch of experience in first aid, assuming that you've read the necessary skill book before attempting this technique. So moving on from first aid now, we come to the electrical skill. If you're wondering why anyone would bother with electrical as a skill, the biggest benefit is to hotwire vehicles. Having one level in electrical and two levels in mechanics means that you'll be able to hotwire vehicles, meaning that they won't require a key to operate them. Other benefits include being able to craft certain engineering creations 
things like noisemakers and pipe bombs, as well as switching regular light sources to battery powered ones so that they don't drain your fuel. You can choose the electrician occupation for three levels in electrical, or engineer for one level in electrical. Now, most people that have played some Project Zomboid likely know that the easiest way to level your electrical skill is to dismantle electrical objects like radios and digital watches. So naturally, gathering up digital watches and radios from zombie corpses and dismantling them can provide you with a bunch of experience, specifically 0.5 XP per device. Each device will give you some electronic scrap. However, what you might not know is that the electrical skill is also gained from repairing a generator. You'll gain 1.25 XP from each repair. This is without the buff from skill books, traits, or occupations. And conveniently, each repair consumes just one electronic scrap and repairs a generator by 4%. So if you've been using a generator at your base for a while, you can put the electronic scrap from dismantling all of those watches to good use and level your electrical skill in the meantime. I'm going to move to mechanics next as this is most frequently paired with electrical to hotwire vehicles. Outside of that though, mechanics is greatly valued for its ability to repair or swap out vehicle parts and maintain your vehicle's condition in Project Zomboid. You can choose the mechanic occupation to start with three levels of this skill or take the trait amateur mechanic for one level. Leveling mechanics is sometimes a bit daunting for newer players but it's actually really simple once you know what to do, especially when you're just getting started. With the first couple of levels in mechanics, all you need is a screwdriver. Once you have that, you can remove the headlights, taillights, radio and battery of any vehicle you come across. These are guaranteed success and each one will give you a small amount of XP. Installing these parts after you've removed them will also grant you the same amount of XP, so that's worth doing as well. You can do this once per day per vehicle. Now this is the multiplayer friendly strategy that I'd recommend for leveling as it will keep vehicles in good condition for other players, but there is an easier way to do this in single player. If you don't have to worry about scrapping a vehicle's condition, the simplest way to level mechanics is just to try and remove or replace as many parts as you can from a vehicle. The chance of success doesn't matter here. In fact, the more you fail the exercise, the more XP you're going to get from doing so. Unlike our previous multiplayer friendly strategy, this can be performed multiple times in a row until you have gained the XP you need. So really, you can just pick a sacrificial vehicle and start working. Keep in mind that you might need some more tools for this like wrenches, jacks or lug wrenches. Lastly, it's important to note that whilst there aren't any episodes to level mechanics on life and living, there are VHS tapes that can be found in the world called Car Zone that will level your mechanics skill so those can be very useful as well if you want to avoid actually working on vehicles. You may have noticed if you've been tackling mechanics already that metalworking also comes into play with repairing certain vehicle parts. Leveling this skill will also allow you to build structures that are stronger than wooden ones and craft metal barricades. For most actions relating to leveling metalworking we're going to need a propane torch and welding mask. Now once again I'm going to go through two strategies here, one for single player and one for multiplayer. The single player strategy for leveling metalworking is an easy one and is quite simply to dismantle metal objects. Specifically, the best XP gains that you can get from any furniture items comes from dumpsters, large metal shelving units and bathtubs. These each grant 5 experience points. Most of these will be failures in the early stages but as your metalworking level increases you'll be more successful and gain more supplies from using this method. If you're on a multiplayer server or to be honest just want to level as quickly as possible, dismantling car wrecks is the best way to go. Not only are you going to clear the roads for other players without destroying loot containers, but you're going to have a huge collection of scrappable vehicles in one place if you pick one of the wreck pileups like on the West Point Bridge for example. Keep in mind that when you are dismantling objects, you're going to use propane, so you're going to need to have some spare propane canisters on standby. These can be taken from any propane barbecue found in the world. Once you've done a batch of dismantling, you can use either three metal bars or one metal sheet on windows to barricade them and gain 1.5 XP per barricade for some extra experience. And remember, you can do this on both sides of a window. These can be constructed at level 0 without any required knowledge from magazines. As you find more magazines, you can craft objects with metalworking that give more XP. Crafting a metal wall, which can be done at level 2, gives you 3.75 XP for example. From here, the most cost efficient way to level is metal crates. This requires level 4 and gives 5 experience points. That leaves us with the final crafting skill, which is tailoring. Often overlooked in Project Zomboid, the tailoring
tailoring skill allows you to patch holes in your clothing, fortify it to better protect your character from bites, and even repair clothing at higher levels. Leveling tailoring is actually quite easy, and doesn't require much in the way of tools to get started. All we need is a sewing needle and some thread, but the thread can be obtained during our first step, which is simply to start ripping up some clothing. If you want to max out tailoring entirely, the best way to do so, strictly speaking, is to simply rip up clothing until you reach about level 4. Each time you gain materials, you'll gain XP, and as you level up, your chances of getting materials will get higher. Once you reach this point, you should have enough thread and materials to carry out the next step of leveling and max out your skill. So, once we have some materials, we're simply going to apply patches to various spots of our clothing. For this reason, overalls make for the best practice piece here, as it has the most spots of any clothing item that we can add patches to. If you're just practicing, I'd suggest using ripped sheets for this, as these are the easiest parts to find over denim or leather, and will allow you to save the good stuff for your own clothing that you plan to wear. Each time you add a patch to your clothing, you'll gain either 0.25 XP or 0.5 XP randomly. Once the item is all patched up, just removing the patches and any successfully recovered ones will give you one full XP point. If you lose the patch, you'll gain 0.25 experience points. The chance of getting the patch back will gradually increase as you level and starts at 10%. As a side note, for when you're making your own padded clothing, leather strips provide the most defense gain, so I'd advise using that. So that's all the crafting skills now covered. You now know how to level them in the most efficient ways currently known to Project Zomboid players. Now we just have three survival skills left to cover. Now I'm going to start with fishing. This is honestly one of the best skills to have in Project Zomboid if you're living near water, giving you a constant source of food when your fishing is leveled. You can choose the occupation fisherman for three levels in fishing, or the trait angler for one level in fishing. Now this is quite a complex one, so try to stay with me and feel free to watch this back if you need to. Firstly, we have two methods of fishing. We can either use a spear to spear fish, which is faster than regular fishing, but we can't use bait to increase our success chances, and the chance of actually catching something is lower than just using a fishing rod. As the best XP from fishing comes from actually catching items, I'd recommend using a fishing rod. Next, we need to select our bait. If you need something quickly, worms are the easiest to find. You can get these by digging in the ground with a trowel or a shovel, as well as when removing grass. When you catch something, this bait will be consumed. The best bait to use, if available, is fishing tackle, which increases the chances you'll actually catch fish instead of junk items. They also have a condition, which means that you can use them over multiple casts, unlike any live bait, and the worst bait are bait fish, which have a 50% increased chance to catch junk, and for some reason, they will only allow you to catch pike. Some players prefer to keep fishing tackle for when they have leveled fishing so they can bring in more food, but if you're looking to level as quickly as possible, fishing tackle is the way to go. Lastly, you can increase your chances of catching fish by 10% if you go out by the water at dawn or dusk, specifically between the hours of 4am and 7am, or 6pm and 9pm. In the winter months of November to February, your chances of catching fish will be reduced by 20%. If you catch a junk item, you'll gain 1 experience point, and if you catch a small fish, this goes up to 3 experience points, a medium fish is 5 experience points, and a big fish is 7 experience points. So to sum up, we want to fish with a fishing rod, using fishing tackle, or worms if you can't find any at either dawn or dusk for the fastest leveling as the more fish we catch instead of junk the better our experience gains will be. Exposure Survival on the Life and Living channel covers fishing at 6pm on days 1 and 3. These can also be found on VHS tapes. Next is foraging. The foraging system in Project Zomboid has been overhauled recently and we're still learning various facts about the system but I'm going to try and cover the best way to level with the limited knowledge that we have currently. The first thing I want to mention is that several occupation and trait choices will affect your foraging, either by affecting the search radius, reducing or increasing the effects of weather on foraging, or simply by increasing your level. I'm going to include a link in the description to the foraging wiki page here, because there's a whole table where these benefits can be viewed for each occupation choice. There's a lot of them, and it would just take me ages to go through. For people focused on foraging though, Park Ranger seems to be the best choice for occupations, giving you two levels 
levels and the widest search radius increase of all the occupation choices. Foraging during the day under clear skies is your best way to find materials, whilst foraging if you're looking to level. Both rain and darkness will drastically reduce your chances to find certain types of items that are relatively common in Project Zomboid. Foraging in wooded areas or on roads tends to be the quickest way to discover items, as you'll frequently find things like twigs, branches, rocks or stones. Each foraging find will grant you experience points, and you'll gain some more points when adding the item to your inventory, so make sure to pick everything up that you find. As for watching shows on Life and Living, foraging is covered at 6pm on Exposure Survival, specifically on days 5 and 7. So that finally brings us to our last skill, which is Trapping. This is another one that has a deceptive amount of complexity to it, so I'm going to include another wiki page link in the description for this one. You can pick Park Ranger as an occupation for all knowledge of existing traps and two levels in trapping. Hiker will give you one level in trapping and knowledge of some traps, and Hunter will give you one level in trapping and knowledge of all traps. For the purposes of this video though, I'm going to try and keep things pretty simple and assume that you haven't taken any of these occupations or traits. When first leveling trapping, we're going to build trap crates or stick traps. Both of these traps require no existing levels in trapping and only require you to have read the magazines associated. Stick traps are easier to make, but can only catch birds, whereas the trap crates require some more materials and a saw of some kind, but can catch larger items like rabbits and squirrels. Experience points are granted based on the size of your catch, with a minimum experience reward of 3 points per successful catch. Now with this in mind, I'd recommend trap crates, as you're always going to get a higher reward than with stick traps, since the catches will be larger in size. For the best results, you'll want to place your traps before 7pm. Rabbits or squirrels can be caught between the hours of 7pm and 5am. You're also better off putting your trap in an area considered as deep forest. This is the biome most likely to give you rabbits as your reward. On the similar token, you'll want to use either carrots or cabbage for your baits. Both of these can be grown by the player. Carrots have the highest chance to catch rabbits, cabbage following closely behind, and finally, you'll want to place the trap at least 75 tiles away from where you are currently operating. If you are closer than 75 tiles, the trap won't catch anything. Every in-game hour, you have a chance of catching an animal based on all of the factors that I've just mentioned. So check your traps regularly for the best chances of leveling. The longer you leave an animal in the trap, the more likely it is to break out, so check regularly. Life and Living covers trapping on exposure to survival at 6pm on day 6 and day 6 only. So that's it from me in this video. If there's anything that I've missed or anything that you want to add about your preferred methods for leveling skills, please do feel free to let me know in the comments. This is easily the most complex part of Project Zomboid, and I know there might be some things I've missed as a result. Once again, do feel free to drop the channel a sub if you want to see some more guides or gameplay for Project Zomboid. And finally, a very special thank you to all of my existing patrons who have joined me on our whitelisted Project Zomboid server. If you want to join them, there is a link in the description. Thanks guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.